Like circles? Then you're gonna love these. Hey there, and welcome to How'd You Get That, where we solve all your math and physics problems. I'm David, and today we are returning to three dimensions, we are returning to circles, and we are mashing them all together to form cylindrical coordinates. Cartesian, or rectangular coordinates, expand into three dimensions pretty straightforwardly. We just add a z onto the end of our x, y coordinates. But polar coordinates expand into three dimensions a little bit differently. There are actually two ways that they can expand into three dimensions. One using cylindrical coordinates, and one using spherical coordinates. Now both of these three-dimensional coordinate systems have circles as their cross-sections, and therefore we can make the jump from polar coordinates to those two different three-dimensional coordinate systems. Spherical coordinates are useful when we have spherical symmetries, like with planets or with point particles. And cylindrical coordinates are useful when we have cylindrical symmetries, like when we are looking at cans or wires or things like that. We're going to be focusing on cylindrical coordinates today and looking at spherical coordinates in the future. The cylindrical coordinate system has elements of both the polar coordinate system and the Cartesian coordinate system in it. To see how this works, the first thing we're going to do is use our polar coordinates, r and theta, as the basis of this coordinate system. Now, the next thing is that we're going to draw a circle on the xy plane centered at the origin with a radius of r and extend that circle up along the z axis. Any point on that circle can be defined by the coordinate point r comma theta and that circle can be anywhere on the z axis. So the third variable point defined by this coordinate system is z. Any point in this space can be defined by r, theta, and z. Notice that in both Cartesian coordinates and cylindrical coordinates that our third coordinate is z. That means that the transformations between these two coordinate systems is relatively straightforward. Just as with polar coordinates versus Cartesian coordinates, we can define x in terms of r and theta as well as y, so that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. Fortunately, those z's are both equivalent in each coordinate system, and so z is just equal to z. Okay, so let's put this into practice. Let's solve for the volume of a cylindrical sheet that has an outer radius of 5, a thickness of 2, and a length of 10 units. Calculus alert! If you aren't or haven't taken calculus yet, don't worry. We'll be working through this without too much of a headache, so just follow along as best you can, and don't worry if you don't get all of it. You'll still see why cylindrical coordinates can be very useful. So, let's draw out the situation first. I have a cylinder of length 10, which I'm going to draw along the z axis here. From z is equal to 0, all the way z is equal to 10. The walls of the cylinder are 2 units thick and have an outer radius of 5, which means that the inner radius is 3. Let's draw that here as two concentric rings around the z axis. There are a couple of ways to solve this problem using your rotation of symmetry and things like that, but this time I want to use cylindrical coordinates and triple integrals to solve for this. Again, if you haven't seen this before, don't worry, we're going to be explaining this pretty simply, so uh, just follow along as best you can. When I triple integrate, I want to integrate across each axis in my problem. So in this case, that means across r, across theta, and across z. Once I integrate along one axis, I then take that new expression and integrate along the next axis, take that new expression again and integrate along the last axis. The triple integral of d tau, which is our volume element, is equal to the triple integral of dx dy dz. As mentioned before, what I would do is I would integrate along the x-axis first, then along the y-axis, and then along the z-axis. But we're not working in Cartesian coordinates, we're working in cylindrical coordinates. So I need to write this expression newly in terms of r, theta, and z. Unfortunately though, our d tau in our triple integral does not become dr d theta dz. If you want to see how the volume element d tau transforms into cylindrical coordinates, we can either use some cylindrical geometry or something called the Jacobian. If we look at it geometrically, we can see that the volume element is composed of three linear elements. One being an arc length, r d theta, one being a radial length, dr, and one being a linear height, dz. Multiplying all these together, we get our volume element. d tau is equal to r d theta dr dz. If you want to know how to do this using the Jacobian, I'll leave that up to you. 
All you need to do is solve for the determinant of this matrix made up of partial derivatives. Those partial derivatives come from the functions that are the transformations between Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates. You should arrive at this matrix, and solving for that determinant, you should arrive at the answer. But I digress. Back to our triple integral. Now, writing the volume is equal to the triple integral of d tau in cylindrical coordinates, we get that that is equivalent to the triple integral of r d theta dr dz. So we're ready to integrate, but we don't know what our limits of integration are. So let's go and figure those out. Let's start with r. We know that the maximum value of r is 5, and that the thickness of this sheath is 2. So therefore, we are going from a value of r is equal to 3, Two, and going to a maximum value of r equal to 5. Now let's look at theta. Theta, we are integrating all the way around this cylinder, so we are going to go from a theta equal to 0 to a theta equal to 2 pi. Finally, let's look at z. Our limbs of integration for z correspond to the length of this cylinder, so going from z is equal to 0 all the way to z is equal to 10 should give us our limits of integration for z. Okay, so now we are ready to integrate. Volume is equal to the triple integral here. Now fortunately, because the variables within this triple integral are separable, that means that we can make this into three single integrals that are multiplied together. Now I'm left with v is equal to the integral from 0 to 10 dz times the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta times the integral from 3 to 5 r dr. All these integrals are pretty straightforward to do. The only one we really need to do any work on is the r integral. The z integral becomes 10, the theta integral becomes 2 pi, and the r integral becomes this, which then reduces down to 8. Multiplying these three integrals together, I get 160 pi. And that's the volume of our cylindrical sheath. Bonus tip, if you remember from geometry that the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared h, where h is equal to z in this case, we can see that the volume of our sheath is really just the volume of a five radius cylinder, 10 units long, minus the volume of a three radius cylinder, also 10 units long. If you do have that math, we should also find that we get a volume of 160 pi cubic units. If we were using Cartesian coordinates, we'd have to set up this integral here, which uses the idea of solids of revolution. Now, we can solve for this, but I think this is a bit less elegant and a little less intuitive than using cylindrical coordinates and triple integrals. Now, the trade-off is that you have to use those triple integrals, but in this case, they're actually really simple to solve. And who doesn't need more multivariable calculus in their life? If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, along with suggestions of what you'd like to see in future episodes of How'd You Get That? If you liked what you saw today, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another math, physics, or problem-solving tutorial. I also offer one-on-one -on -one math and physics sessions for students of all levels, so if you're interested, send me a message. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next problem.